And now I am going to hand things off to our fearless and wonderful leader, the very capable executive director of Center for Book Arts, Karina Reynolds. Okay. Hi, Emily, and hello, everyone. Thank you so much for gathering tonight. It is truly wonderful to see everyone. Um, so many familiar names and familiar faces. Um, thanks for uh, joining us tonight to celebrate the end of 2021. Uh, so exciting. Um, for those of us, or those of you that don't know me personally, um, yes, Richard, that is from the original 1974. Um, my name is Karina Reynolds, and Emily, if you advance to the next slide, uh, I thought I'd give you a little background. Um, this picture here, believe it or not, is um, from the very first time I visited Center for Book Arts. <laughs> Um, and that was even before I lived in New York City. I was in town to see an exhibition of book art at the center um, to see some work that my friend had made. And I remember wandering around, I'd taken the bus into New York and um, finally made my, my way up to the third floor and was just absolutely enthralled. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a young me before pre-New York um, and pre-involvement with Center for Book Arts or the very, the very beginning. Um, so tonight I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of our accomplishments um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, some of the things that I've just been so proud of in this last year. Um, so the first thing I'd like to talk about that I'm really proud of and excited to bring into 2022 as well is the Contemporary Artist Book Conference. Uh, so this year, Center for Book Arts uh, took over management of the Contemporary Artist Book Conference. It is an annual conference which is organized by a group of volunteers, um, a mixture of librarians and artist book enthusiasts to uh, promote the um, critical dialogue around artist books. So a lot of the work that we've been doing this year has been around trying to build voice and audience, um, as well as deepen our understanding of the book arts. So in February of this year, we had over 1200 people tune in for an online conference in conjunction with the New York Art Book Fair. And uh, we talked all about the temperature of art book criticism and scholarship today. It was really fascinating. We had scholars from all over the world um, discussing artist books, book art, um, art books, and the full spectrum in between. Uh, Emily, can you go to the next slide? Thank you. And one of the things that I thought was absolutely fascinating about uh, this year's conference was that it inspired publications. So um, you can see here on the left, Urgent Publishing After the Artist Book, Making Public and Movements Toward Liberation. That was a presentation that Paul Soelis did at the Contemporary Artist Book Conference. And that edition has already sold out and been reprinted. So if you haven't picked up a copy, it's a really interesting read. Um, you can also watch Paul's presentation on our website. Um, also mention of the Contemporary Artist Book Conference has been included in other publications, including this one that Automato P just released um, about photo books. Uh, another thing that we did this year at Center for Book Arts um, was that we continued to offer online classes and my new colleague Fan is going to tell you all about that. Say hi, Fan. <laughs> um, and over the last two years, we've had over 8,000 students tuning in from over 60 countries um, to participate in workshops and online programs. I think a lot of our instructors have talked about how important the diversity and, of different types of students that they've encountered, the interesting interactions that they're having um, through online programming. So we're really excited to bring that into 2022 as well. Um, 
the next thing is that earlier in 2021, uh, myself and two of my collaborators, Megan and Liberty and David Solo, uh, published this new manifesto for book art criticism in the Brooklyn Rail, which kicked off our efforts with book art review. Book Art Review is a new publication dedicated to critical theory and um, review of artists' books and book art. Um, if we go to the next slide, you'll see a, a quick preview of what that looks like. Um, we are preparing, ramping up for publication of our first issue. You can see here a couple of spreads from a conversation between um, myself and the two editors of Book Art Review. As as well as a few uh, sneak peek into some of our articles that are coming up. Um, we're really excited for Deirdre Lawrence's essay, as well as this um, review about uh, uh, Phoebe Cripps' book. Um, and it's also gonna have an online component. So quick preview here of what that's gonna look like in our site. Um, one of the other accomplishments that I was really excited about this year, if we go to the next slide, is that one of our current artists in residence um, uh, uh, currently has work up in the Greater New York Show at PS1. Um, we're so proud of Black Mass Publishing and Yusuf Hassan. Um, it's really wonderful. If you haven't had a chance to go take a look, um, there's a lot to read, there's a lot of information, and you'll just get a small glimpse into the incredibly um, active and interesting practice that Yusuf has developed. Um, we also have a former artist in residence in the exact same show, uh, Tammy Wynn, so keep your eyes open for that. Um, also, current artist in residence Gwen Smith just closed a solo exhibition in Dumbo. And on the same night, uh, we had Rowan Renee opening a solo exhibition at Smack Melon. So um, it features a, I believe, is it 75 foot long accordion book that they made during their residency at Center for Book Arts. It's an absolutely beautiful show. Um, so I definitely recommend that you go check that out. So our artists in residence are really doing absolutely absolutely amazing, wonderful things in the world, um, not just at Center for Book Arts, but taking the book arts out and sharing it with the public. And uh, with that, I'm going to lead into our biggest accomplishment this year is that Center for Book Arts unionized. So we're really excited to bring um, a new structure to the way that our staff interacts with uh, management. And at the same time, we're super excited to become a leader as the first Book Arts Center was unionized in the world. So um, thank you to our community for making that happen. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Emily Marenker. Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much, Karina. All right. Uh, so it has been a fantastic year. And now I am going to talk to you a little bit about our individual giving um, among the uh, more data oriented stuff for this evening. So I promise I will go swiftly so you can get to the beautiful pictures. Uh, so we are a community organization for and by our community. And we run on the generous donations of folks like you, your friends, uh, everybody that you champion us to, and we are grateful. Uh, this year we have have um, started some new things with our membership program. We introduced reciprocal memberships at related institutions. This means that your credentials as an active CBA member can get you discounts on their classes or in shops at our partners. Uh, these folks include institutions like Manhattan Graphic Center, Austin Center for Book Arts, EFA Robert Blackburn Printmaking Studio, Bibliographic Society of America, and the Western New York Book Arts Center. So we really are uh, putting in the entire book arts world at your fingertips and it's very exciting. 
Um, our membership drive for this year taking place in February passed our goal uh, by about 6%, which was fantastic. Uh, so we do appreciate that. Uh, in comparison to last year's numbers, we are actually down in the grand total numbers of members, though our funds raised from membership dues are slightly ahead of last year. So I wanna take a moment to thank our current members uh, and encourage everyone here to spread the word about membership with CBA. Those dues are a foundational support for all of activities activities that we do and make possible. And there's really nothing like hearing firsthand about the delights and benefits of having access to an actual Vander Cook or guillotine, not things that you can readily keep in your apartment, as well as discounts to classes or bookshops. Membership also makes a great gift, of course. And during this season, I know we're all looking for cool ideas for our loved ones. Uh, also happening this year was our first virtual benefit. Uh, this was a very interesting logistical challenge and area to pioneer this year. And I do think we had some great success. We did in fact make our fundraising goal for it. And the um, virtual benefit honored the amazing career of uh, Fluxus founder, Allison Knowles. And besides her discussing and reading from her works, we had a poetry reading from John Yao. We heard from educator and artist Buzz Spector. We had our first ever collections research fellow Galina Mardilovich talked to us about using our resources here for her research and we had a performance art piece from 2019 resident Vincent Chong. During this benefit we welcomed 121 new constituents to the center so people who had never really had contact with us before so growth even in a year of isolation and shutdown and our zoom participants during the event spanned over uh, half the states including Alaska, Hawaii, Texas, Montana, Alabama, and moving my notes here, thank you. Uh, we also had some really fantastic corporate sponsors come on board for this, uh, Flatiron Partnership, Oak Knoll Books, St. Rita's Traveling Bookstore, Vamp and Tramp Booksellers, Steven Siegel Leather, Washi Arts, Central Booking, and the Brooklyn Rail. So I do wanna give them props. And uh, if you're ever on their websites and everything, know that they're, they're cool people. Um, along with the many technical areas pioneered this past year by CA, uh, CBA, we use text to give for the first time during this benefit. Uh, and a quick reminder that that channel is always still open. So anyone anywhere can text book arts to 44321 and any and every contribution is very valuable to us. Speaking of contributions, I'm going to move us forward in the year to our summer appeal. Um, excuse me. Oops. There we are, excuse me, uh, which was connected to uh, the book art review, which Karina already told everybody about. So this particular campaign helped to raise further funds to launch this publication. Uh, and this is the only real source out there for uh, public discussions about the field uh, to encourage criticism and different viewpoints from being shared. It's a source of educational resources. And we are also going to be offering a prize for book art criticism. I think what's really fascinating about uh, this appeal for us too is that not only did we have people all over the United States participating, but we had other countries represented as well. The United Kingdom, France, Spain, Brazil, and Norway. And as of the end of November, we had over 200 subscriptions sold to it. So uh, people clearly want a forum for book arts, which is no surprise to us, of course. Uh, moving towards 2022, uh, we are working on our year-end appeal, which um, in particular is trying to raise funds to support our pay-as-you-can pricing model for classes and scholarships, which have really put um, book arts, uh, uh, making it available to many more people and making accessibility and affordability a reality. Uh, we have about $30,000 of our 50,000 goal at this point. So we have three weeks to raise $20,000. If you have not already given, please consider texting or going to our website to do so. And there's lots of other ways to support us as well. Uh, tell your friends, retweet, repost on Facebook from us. You can visit our Amazon wish list uh, for material supplies that would help us in teaching classes in putting supplies in the hands of students. Any of that is very valuable. Uh, we, I'm looking forward to the membership drive in February of next year. Uh, we're looking to grow our membership uh, by about 
uh, 60 new members, uh, which I believe we can do based on last year's successes. And uh, we're also planning to do a lottery for our current members. Send us a picture of yourself out and about with the Center for Book Art tote bag. Uh, the book is Art Tote Bag. And that automatically enters you into a lottery. We will pick a random winner and you get to give a CBA membership uh, to a friend, family member, colleague of your choice. So stay tuned for that. Uh, another goal that I'm working towards in the next year is improve, improving our data flow and integrity from our different systems so that um, we can continue to do things like removing a donor's name from a campaign email list once they've actually given so they don't get bothered by that again, or making sure that we're integrating constituents from class registration to our donor database, all of these kinds of things to keep growing and expanding our audience, but also to make sure that we're talking to people in real time reacting to their actual uh, behaviors and patterns with us so that we can keep in touch in meaningful and real ways. Uh, and with that, I'm going to pass you over to my colleague, Elspeth Pencrazy. So thank you so much. Hi there. Uh, I'm Elspeth Pencrazy. I am the uh, Director of Development and Center for Book Arts. I started here this summer, so it is lovely to meet those of you uh, virtually who I haven't met yet. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been fundraising in New York uh, for about a decade, and uh, besides my work, I'm also, as a fundraiser, I'm also a poet. Uh, I'm an artist, a reader, uh, and a lover of museums. Um, and I'm happy to say and proud to say that my writing has also been featured in two artist books. And uh, I love the medium and the possibilities of publishing. Uh, so since I started here in August, uh, I've enjoyed getting to know CBA through reporting on the 2021 grants. Uh, I mean, first I would like to say thank you to the amazing institutions and individuals who have given to CBA. Um, but second, I'll say, what cool work has been happening here in this very special place. Thank you to the Del Moss Foundation, the Coletta Doolin Foundation, JM Kaplan Fund, Department of Cultural Affairs, New York Community Trust, NISCA, National Endowment on the Arts, Pine Tree Foundation, Poets and Writers, Texas Women's Foundation, Jacques, Vidal, Jacques Louis Vidal Charitable Fund, Andy Warhol Foundation. This year would not have happened without you and some amazing projects happened through dedicated support from these foundations. Um, the Warhol Foundation supported a lot of the scholarship and book arts that fed into the Contemporary Artists Book Conference. Del Moss supported a database migration for our collections database that has totally upped the ways that we're gonna be able to search for books and people are gonna be able to um, access things in the collection. Um, so that's all really cool. Another interesting thing that I've sort of been privy to is that um, Grants ask you to tally up a lot of statistics. And so I've been amazed to learn that in the past year, CBA offered over 175 classes in person and virtual, supported 84 artists through either residencies, curatorial opportunities, or exhibition opportunities. Uh, we had eight exhibitions, scores of public programs, and at least 80 works of art created here at CBA, like that we know of. <laughs> and nearly 6,000 individuals experienced CBA programs just in the past year. So that is all pretty cool. Um, and looking forward to next year, uh, I'll just say that the team has amazing things planned, which you'll hear about in this meeting, sustaining some of the programs that longtime friends of the center expect and starting a lot of new things. Um, for those of you who don't have a lot of experience with nonprofit fundraising, the way it works is that we start the year with no money in hand. That's like the definition of what it is to be a nonprofit. So uh, we have a plan of what we wanna do and we have a hope of how much money we can raise to do those things. So our, if you care about artists and residence programs, education programs, collections management, our studio maintenance, our exhibitions, our conference, keeping the lights on, um, we're looking for funding right now for everything on this list, um, including just, you know, keeping the studios going and so that people can rent them at a reasonable rate and all this magic can happen. Uh, so if you have any leads or any ideas, any foundations that you've seen supporting other uh, organizations or any you know, wealthy sugar daddies you wanna introduce us to, 
um, just shoot me an email. I'm always here to hear that kind of stuff. And, you know, it takes a village and we're making those plans now. So thank you. All right, and now we're going to head over uh, a few people to meet with uh, Sarah Morgan, our new marketing and communications manager. Hello, everyone. Nice to have you here. Um, I, my name is Sarah. I use she and they pronouns, and I'm the marketing and communications manager at CBA. I started in August with Elba, um, and it's been wonderful to get to know the book arts and the book arts community. Um, I came from a public art organization called Socrates Sculpture Park doing similar work in marketing and communications. So I'm definitely new to the book arts world and community and I love um, how warmly I've been welcomed and uh, how much I've already learned and I'm looking forward to continuing to uh, grow and learn here at CBA. Um, if you wanna go to the next slide. Uh, so one of the wonderful things for me as the marketing and communications manager at CBA is uh, I came into this institution uh, having access to a really healthy following on all of our digital platforms. Um, we, our most popular platform on social media is definitely Instagram because of course, as a visual and literary arts organization, Instagram um, is often the best platform for sharing content like, like that. Um, but we also have very healthy followings on Facebook and Twitter. If you're not already following us on any of these platforms and you have a social media account on, one of the, on that platform, then please do follow us. We are at Center for Book Arts on Twitter. The word for is the number four. Um, but besides that, it's Center for Book Arts spelled out uh, no spaces on all of our platforms. We also have almost 15,000 subscribers to our email newsletter, um, which we send out uh, programmatic updates weekly. And our website had um, in 2021, uh, over 92,000 unique uh, visits, uh, which is really exciting to see as well. Uh, if you wanna go to the next slide, Emily. So this is something that I would love to hear from all of you, the people who are truly committed to CBA and um, have been part of this community perhaps for much longer than I have. Um, there's so many wonderful things going on at Center for Book Arts all the time that it's hard for me even to know where what to share on uh, any given day. Um, so please feel free to, you can message me in the chat or reach out to me via email, sarah at centerforbookarts.org. Um, do you want to see more information about our artists in residence? Do you want to see more examples of type specimens? Um, I am hoping to show everyone the content they are most interested in and uh, wanting to engage with. And I would also love if you could help spread the Center for Book Arts gospel by reposting, sharing, forwarding Center for Book Arts's posts and messages, including uh, we're sending out a couple messages about our year end fundraiser. So when you get those, please send them on to friends and family who uh, might be interested in helping support what we do here at Center for Book Arts. Thank you so much. And over to our new artist programs manager, Camillo. Okay, thank you very much, Emily. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'm Camilo Otero. I'm the new Artist Programs Manager at CBA. And uh, I recently joined late October this year. 
and I'm really excited to be here. I wanted to take the chance to thank uh, the team and the community for welcoming me here. And uh, I'm the person who's going to take care of uh, Center for Book Arts exhibitions and the uh, artists in residence programs. Um, this year we had uh, more than 10 um, wonderful exhibitions at CBA. Uh, Obviously, I didn't have the chance to see them all. I recently moved from Colombia, um, and uh, this is my first uh, month in New York. So I'm glad and also very, very cold because, uh, well, as you know, uh, I'm, well, I'm coming from the tropics and uh, it's very, very different. Um, I, my, a little bit about my background, I come from, um, uh, art and cultural management and independent publishing. Uh, I co-founded uh, a project called Calypso Press, which is a small publishing press and a printing studio, uh, which we had in Cali until um, a few uh, uh, weeks ago. And um, Right now, uh, I'm focusing on next year's programs and uh, activities. So I just wanted to spotlight a couple of really interesting exhibitions that we saw uh, that were here this year. One of them was uh, Imperfect Archiving, Archiving as Practice, which sh uh, showcased um, the arc uh, Gender Fail Archive, which is an artist's um, uh, publishing archive, and it uh, puts a focus on archiving as an artistic practice. And um, right now we are, um, uh, we have in show How to Cook a Wolf, which is an exhibition that uh, focuses on um, cooking as the main, um, like is a gathering activity and an expression through which artists have been able to uh, face and um, uh, connect with, to connect, thank you, uh, through uh, these moments of uh, pandemic and uh, staying at home and disconnection in general. Um, next year, we will have uh, also uh, around, we will have 11 uh, exhibitions uh, with, uh, we will start our new um, season in January. Uh, January 14th, we'll uh, kick off our uh, winter season and uh, you can still see our current exhibitions until this Saturday, 11. Um, if, uh, Emily, can you move to the next slide, please? Yes, and I also wanted to uh, spotlight our uh, current ar uh, artists in residence. As you uh, might know, we have two programs, Workspace Artists in Residence. Uh, this uh, program is focused on artists from the five boroughs in New York and um, artists in an early stage of their career, but they are, um, uh, they don't necessarily come from the book art world. So it's really interesting because we connect uh, book arts with other practices that these artists are bringing from their, from their personal practice. And then book artists in residence practice, uh, artists that have a tradition or uh, in printmaking or bookmaking, and um, and uh, really uh, bring their experience and are able to um, bring their practice uh, to CBA. Um, I wanted to thank you again and uh, go back to um, Emily. Thank you, Emily. Great. Thank you so much. And also from the programs world here, we're gonna move over to uh, educational programs and our new colleague, Fan Kong. Fan, thank you so much. 
Hi, thanks, Emily. Um, hi, my name is Fan, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, and this is my third week here at Center for Book Arts. And so I've been, um, you know, incredibly lucky and have learned a lot since joining the staff. Um, I um, come from a range of educational and cultural institutions in New York City, San Francisco, and and in Seattle. Um, my um, background is primarily working in DIY making and tinkering programs. And so um, during the pandemic, I actually founded my own business selling handmade books um, in Union Square. And so the Center for Book Arts has always been an incredibly um, inspirational and aspirational place for me. And so I just feel really grateful to be here. Um, and uh, if you go to the next slide, Emily. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Um, and as Karina had mentioned, um, you know, in the past two years, Center for Book Arts has served over um, 8,000 students from 60 different countries. And when I was um, supporting um, one of our instructors, um, Ellen Sheffield in Unfolding Narratives course, you know, she started off the session by, you know, just actually just expressing gratitude for, you, you know, that it's a miracle that we can do these classes over Zoom at all. And so I really want to echo that. Um, and, um, you know, in the past year, when we have diversified our all offerings and um, have been able to serve more audiences through online Zoom classes. Um, we will continue to do that in the new year. Um, and we will welcome back in-person classes in the print studio and in the um, bindery. So I'm really looking forward to taking some classes myself. Um, and in this slide, um, here's a range of student work from this past year. Um, you can you know, see the accordion book, there's some um, cyanotypes as well, um, and some classes that I was surprised by that we offer here as well, like paper marbling and embroidery. Um, so in 2022, um, I look forward to, um, you know, launching, you know, continuing to um, have the breadth and depth of classes here at Center for Book Arts, and I, you know, look forward to learning alongside the rest of you. Thank you. Back to you, Emily. Now we're going to get a collections update from librarian Jillian Lee. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much, Fan. Um, my name is Jillian. Um, I am the new librarian here at Center for Book Arts. I use they, them, theirs pronouns. And I started on the same day as Camillo, actually, in October of this year. Um, about my background, I have worked in art museum and art gallery libraries for about five years now. I have been involved in zine making, zine fairs, and zine communities, and the artist book communities in New York and Virginia um, for probably about 10 years now. I am crazy about zines, I love artist books, and I am so incredibly happy to be here at Center for Book Arts now. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please, Emily. I um, to share some exciting fun facts and accomplishments for this year about our collections. This year, 422 new records were added to our online database and 888 records were updated. So that means that more than 1200 items are now findable or more easily searchable in our new database, which I will talk about more later. Um, additionally, some donation highlights this year, uh, the absolutely incredible Paper Cut Zine Collection, which was eight boxes or more than 150 zines, um, in addition to a collection of related podcast episodes that are about the world of contemporary zines and DIY publishing, um, that collection was donated by Christopher Cardenbeekis this year. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I encourage everybody to stop by and uh, check it out. Additionally, um, oh, if you could go back, please. Thank you so much. Um, Rosalind Fox Solomon donated 12 artist books and a collection of slides that 
depict Richard Minsky's fabrications for Rosalind's works. Um, those were donated to our fine arts collection this year, um, including the book which you see here, which is called Along the Road. Um, our artist in residence, Oswaldo Garcia, donated a collection of works that he made or collaborated on. Uh, just a sample is shown here on this slide. It's a fabulous collection and it's always really, um, it's really special when our artists in residence donate works or collections of works that are really important to them and that mark their journey as artists. Um, it, it's really special to be able to see that and for future researchers to be able to access that here at collections, uh, here at the collections at Center for Book Arts. So thank you, Oswaldo. Um, and that's a really special collection that I really recommend coming by to check out. Um, and last but not least, our board member Stephen Burry pledged a donation, a significant donation of artist books to our collection, which is really going to add a lot to the educational value of our collection and which we are incredibly excited to be the stewards for. Um, I wanna add that if you watching here have a significant artist book collection that you feel would add to the educational value of our collection, I really encourage you to get in touch with me. My, my email address, which I'll say again later is collections at centerforbookarts.org, but we invite such uh, donations and we're really grateful for them. Next up, um, let's reflect on the way that our collections were used this year. Artists and residents, curators, visiting researchers and classes all made use of our collections this year. The photo that you see on this slide is um, a, a class of photographers from Yale who came down from New Haven to see some photo books, including in the bottom right, we're about to do a close up on that one, a favorite of mine, this is Baby Book, Variations on a Theme by James Joyce by Anthony Aguilar. Um, I, um, hmm. could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if anybody in the audience can guess what our most pulled book from the reference collection was this year. Put it in the chat, it in the chat if you think you know. Chat it to us. Five seconds. <laughs> Quick audience poll and survey. Okay, well, let's show the people. <laughs> this year, it was a tie between Basic Book Binding by A.W. Lewis and our very own publication, Book Forms, um, both of these extremely useful and fabulous publications about bookmaking. Um, what else about this year? Thank you very much. This year on average monthly, 121 reference and archival items were used and 96 fine arts collections items were consulted per month, which means that almost 230 items every single month were being used by our artist book community. It's incredibly exciting and I love to see our collections being used for research, study and inspiration. It's amazing. Um, as we strive ever more to bring our collections into the public eye, I'm so excited to thank the Del Moss Foundation for supporting, as Elizabeth mentioned, the launch this year of a brand new online database. It's at collections.centerforbookarts.org. It's user-friendly, it has advanced search capabilities. And I know that it sounds boring and nerdy, but it actually is incredibly important to our collections being visible, to researchers being able to use our collections. And I'm really grateful and excited that we were able to launch that this year. Additionally, um, we added QR code signage in the library hallway, and we continue to post collections highlights on social media and share via our weekly email. Um, and next, I, as my presentation comes to a close, I want to give a huge thank you to the Pine Tree, Pine Tree Foundation for um, supporting our collections. And I want to um, gear up to invite in-person researchers to continue to do preservation and archival processing, to set up a dedicated research space at CBA, to do library showcases in the hallway, and to continue to bring book arts to our community. I wanna thank you all. Once again, I wanna thank the Pine Tree Foundation for your support. And thank you to everybody who's donated to the collection this year. Um, your contributions are always really, really helpful. Um, once again, what was that number? You can text uh, book arts to 44321 
to give right now if you have your phone with you. Um, and I wanna thank you all for coming. It was really great to meet you. And I would love for you to get in touch at collections at centerforbookarts.org um, to say hi, to make an appointment to see some great art, um, just to talk about books and zines. Thank you so much again. And I'm gonna pass it off now to Karina. Right. Thank you so much, Jillian. That was great. Um, I always love hearing the way that people utilize our collections. One of the things that really inspires me um, in my daily work at Center for Book Arts is seeing groups of classes coming from local universities or not so local. Sometimes they all take a class trip here to Center for Book Arts um, and just Gary, uh, uh, gathering inspiration about uh, from the historical works, things that we have that are newer recent acquisitions and also um, you know just to look at some of our reference collection um, so looking forward to 2022 we have a lot coming up um, and the thing that I am most excited about is actually the staff um, as you may have noticed uh, throughout this whole presentation in this evening, a lot of them were introducing themselves to you for the first time. And we are really excited to see the new directions that each of these staff members bring their departments for Center for Book Arts. Um, as Jillian said, um, I also want to, and Sarah actually said, I wanna encourage you to share your ideas about Center for Book Arts with us, um, what you're looking for, um, and also leading up to our 50th anniversary, which is going to be coming up in 2024. It's not that long. Um, you know, if you would like to share memories with us about Center for Book Arts over the years, uh, we would be absolutely grateful. And I'm always happy to um, get on the phone and chat or uh, for you to come and visit us in person at Center for Book Arts. All right, Emily, next slide. Um, I also want to say that 2022 and 2021 would not have been possible without the incredible support of our board of directors. Um, this year, we welcomed two new board members. Uh, They're both marked with asterisks here, Sheila Brathwaite and Mylon Houston. We're so grateful for them. Um, and our board members really do a lot. They support us financially. They help us to um, navigate the difficult waters of the New York nonprofit world. And um, they really do help with some of the daily things like just today, a group of board members were at Center for Book Arts helping us to write thank you notes to um, some of you who are on this call today. So um, thank you very much uh, to all of you um, on the board for your support. Um, something new, uh, this year and going into 2022 is that we have an international council. This is a group of individuals around the world and you can see from this list here that they really are around the world um, who have uh, pledged their support um, and to share their ideas and opinions with us to help keep Center for Book Arts on the international pulse of the book arts community. As you all saw through um, our myriad of presentations earlier in this uh, program. Really, we do have people who are tuning into our programs, looking at our exhibitions, um, uh, taking our classes that are from all over the world. So we're really grateful to all of our international council members for their incredible support and advice going into this new year. And last but not least, I want to give a special thanks to all of our volunteers, members, um, as well as interns over 2021, and to all of you who have pledged your support for Center for Book Arts so far. All right. Yes, thank you, Emily. So much love and thank you to the staff. <laughs>